Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this next week. Um, welcome. I hope you had a fantastic and fantabulous weekend. Um, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at maths again, and we're going to be doing factorization. Now, we've already been working through factorization, and we've done things like common factors, and we've done trinomials, we've done grouping, and we have done sum and difference of two squares. Okay, so what I want to do before we carry on with different things and teaching you new things, what I want to do is I would like to do a couple of more complicated examples and go through these complicated examples with you because in exams and tests what's going to happen is that they will give you some nice easy examples and then they will give you one or two really hard ones if it's an exam if it's in the test obviously there'll be more hard ones more difficult ones but these are also what you need to know, be able to do from now all the way through to matric because if you cannot factorize you cannot do maths um yes there's very little math that doesn't need some factorizing so i was just trying to go through the sections of my head Okay, so let's get started. So you've got a squared plus 13 plus 30 over a squared. So the first thing you always look for is a common factor. That's what you always look for first. And you can see that there are no common factors there. There's an a squared here and an a squared here, but nothing here with a's. And there's 13 and 30, and they are, 13 is a prime number and 30 is an even number. So that's just not going to happen. Okay, so there's no common factors. Then you can look for things like the sum and difference of two squares. Okay, and you can see that there's not the sum and difference of two squares. So we can obviously see that this is a trinomial. Why? Because it has got three terms. There's one, there's two, and there's a third term. Okay, but it's interesting trinomial because it's got an a squared at the top here and a squared at the bottom. So what I'm going to suggest we do is we do a bit of a substitution. I'm going to say let k equal k equal a squared. Okay, it doesn't matter what you let be equal a squared, but I'm trying to get rid of this a squared. I don't really like it. So what I'm going to do is make it easier for myself and let it be some single variable. So then do you agree I could write this as k plus 13 plus 30 over k. Now, I don't like this k at the bottom at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to times this whole thing by k. Every one of these I'm going to times by k. So I'm going to go, okay, fine, the whole of this. I'm going to multiply by k. And that's fine to do because I'm multiplying each one of the things in the expression by the k. So by doing that, I've got k squared plus 13k plus 30 over k multiplied by k over 1. So you do agree that those cancel, and I now have this beautiful trinomial of k squared plus 13, oh, sorry, plus 13k plus 30. Okay. Okay. And now what we need to do is we now need to factorize. We need to factorize. So the first thing that we're going to do is, because we know it's a trinomial, is we look at this symbol here and we see that that's a plus. Okay, so that's good because it means that both the operands or the operations in these brackets are going to be the same and they're both going to be plus, right? Nice and easy. Then we can see, oh, look, this thing here has got a prefix of one, a coefficient of one, shall I say, so therefore that's a K and that's a K. So all we need to do now is look at my factor of 30 and we want something that obviously multiplies to get to 30, that's what factors mean, but when that has to add up to 13. So let's go. So we've got 30 and one, do you agree? Then there's, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm still learning how to use this new mouse. So then there is 15 and 2, and then there's 10 and 3, and then there's 6 and 5, and then obviously they go again. So do you agree we want to add up to 13? They both have to be the same sign of to add up to 13. 30 plus 1 is 31. Nope. 15 plus 2 is 17. Nope. 10 plus 3 is 13. Yay, that works. Let's just check. 6 plus 5 is 11. Yay, that doesn't work. So it is going to be k plus 10 or k plus 3. Okay, everybody happy with that? So it's k plus 10, k plus 3. 
Hmm, I'm seeing a problem with this. Okay, you'll see what the problem is in a minute. Okay, fine. So then, oh, it's not that bad. Okay, so do you agree that therefore we can say k plus 10 is equal to 0 or k plus 3 is equal to 0? Okay, therefore we can say, but we let k equal a squared. K equal a squared. So we can say a squared plus 10 equals 0 or a squared plus 3 equals 0. And now if we look at it, we can go, well, if we then try and solve this, we have a squared equals minus 10 or a squared equals minus 3. And do you see what my problem is? My problem is there's no such thing as a square root of a negative number. A square root of a negative number is imaginary and in grade 10 you definitely don't know anything about imaginary numbers. So therefore, as far as we're concerned, for this question, to simplify this, there is no solution. No solution. So don't be freaked out if you get something like this, okay, in the exams, where you end up doing all this work and then you end up with something where you can't actually factorize it. That's fine. There's nothing you can do about that, okay? And it'll still be worth five or six marks to do this question, but you need to realize that you cannot find the square root of a negative number and therefore you will have to write no solution. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, so now we've got some mixed examples and as soon as I'm seeing anything like this, the first thing you think of is, let's do this, we know to do common factors. That's always the very first thing you look for, common factors, right? Then you look for, it doesn't really matter which order, sum and difference, sum and difference, I'm not writing it all out. Then I look for my trinomials and then I look for grouping. Okay, in that order really. Okay, so the first thing I look for are common factors. I'm seeing any later common factors. Okay, do you see that we've got a, a there, and x, but x and y there, and there's x and y there. 15. So we're not really seeing any common factors. So it's not a common factor thing. Is no squared, so it can't be that. Trinomials need to have three terms, it can't be that. So it must be grouping, grouping. So now, the thing about grouping is you need to actually just try. The whole thing about grouping is you just have to tr make, it's trial and error, because there are a lot, sometimes there are multiple ways that you can actually group a problem. So what I'm gonna do is, what I always do, is I try and group the first two first, and the next two and then see what happens okay so if i do that i've got 8ax minus 12ay sorry equals minus now if i take out this minus rumor what does it do it changes this okay so then it becomes 10x minus 15y okay so this has got potential let's see what we can do now if we look at this first bracket do you see we've got a common factor of 4 because 4 goes into 8 and it goes into 12 and we've got an a in both of these. So I could take out a common factor of 4a and what am I left with? I'm left with 8 divided by 4 is 2 so I'm left with 2x minus 12 divided by 4 is 3 and the a is dis disappeared because I've divided it by a. So then you're left with 2x minus 3y minus what could be a common factor from here? Well, obviously five is a common factor because five goes into 10 and five goes into 15. So you take out a five and you're left with x minus y. Oh, sorry, that's so wrong. You take a common factor, on just, um, sorry, my head was going way ahead of my actual handwriting and my mouth. So let's just carry on. Five goes into 10 twice, so we're left with two x minus, five goes into 15, three times, so it's three y. And isn't that beautiful? Because look here, these are now the same. So now I'm going to take these out as a common factor. So if I do that, I've got two x minus three y. And then what am I left with? I'm left with four a minus five. Hooray! Okay. Right, now let's try this question here. Okay. 
So again, the first thing we do is we look for common factors. So I've got x plus 5 times x plus 3 plus k times by 3 plus x. Now, if they say to either simplify or factorize, if your immediate response is to look at this and think you have to multiply out, then you need to rethink how you're approaching these questions. Because multiplying it out, if that's the first thing you think of doing, then you're not really simplifying or factorizing immediately. Okay, sometimes you do have to multiply out to get to a simpler form. But if you look at this, do you see that x plus 3 is exactly the same as 3 plus x? So I could actually take out a common factor of x plus 3. So if I do that, I've got x plus 3, right? What am I left with? I'm left with this bit here, which is x plus plus 5 plus the C plus K, right? Which can be rewritten as X plus 3, X plus 5 plus K. And that's how far we can go. We can't do anything more with that. Okay, right, let's try again. So again, and if you guys are right doing worksheets or tests on this section, I would really suggest that you do this for yourself. You write CF for common factors, and then you can write squares, just like that to remind you some difference of two squares. Then you can write G, grouping, and then you can write try. Okay, so the first thing you always, always look for is common factors. So before I do anything else, I'm going to look at this and see, are there any common factors? And yes, they are, because this is 2a squared minus 18. So both of these are even numbers. So if they're both even numbers, I can take out a common factor of 2, and I'm left with a squared minus 9. Okay, so now I've done the common factor thing. Now let's have a look. Are they possibly perfect squares with a minus in between them? Yes, they are. Yeah, is a squared, which is a perfect square, and yes, nine, which is a perfect square, and there's a minus. So then obviously this is this, some difference of two squares. So I'm going to write two, and then it ends up being two brackets, right? Becomes a minus three, a plus three. And there you go. Not too difficult, hey? Right, let's look at the next question. So we've got 3k, 2m minus 3n, plus 5t, 3n minus 2m. Okay, so this is a little bit of a tricky question because it does really have common factors. It's just not obvious. And the reason it's not obvious is because do you see that this bit here is 2m minus 3n, whereas this is 3n minus 2m. So basically we have what is called a switch round a switch round, or we're going to do a switch round, okay? These have the same terms, okay? That's a 3n and that's a 3n, and this is a 2m and this is a 2m. But these are opposite in signs. So this is positive 2m and this is minus 2m, where this is minus 3m and this is positive. So what we need to do is we need to do a switch round. We may need to make them both look the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this bracket by minus. Okay, and by doing that, this will become a plus, and that will become a minus, and then it will look the same. So, how are we going to do that? We're going to go 3k, 2m minus 3n, and then we're going to multiply this by a minus. It becomes minus 5t, and then it becomes 2m minus 3n, right? Because, because by taking out that minus, dividing this by minus, this becomes a plus, and that becomes a minus, and then I rewrite it. And now this question becomes easy because we've got two common factors. We've got 2m minus 3n, or one common factor, and then we've got 3k minus 5t. And that's it. That's the final answer. So please be aware of these switch rounds and look for them carefully. And then obviously when you do it, remember to take the minus out of the front, okay, so that it can write. You can't just rewrite this and not put the minus in because by doing that, you're actually changing the sum. But if you take the minus out, then you effectively times in this by minus one, but times in that by minus one as well, and it cancels and you end up effectively with the same thing. So you need to be careful of that. Right, let's look at a couple more examples. So again, let's do it. It's common factors. 
then grouping, it really doesn't which, matter which order we do, then trinomials, and then the sum and difference of two squares. Okay, so let's have a look at this. We've got 12x cubed plus 11x squared minus x. Well, immediately my eyes go to this and I go, well, that looks like a trinomial. It's got three terms, okay, but there's a problem. Do you see that's 12x cubed, that's 11x squared, and that's x? But that's okay because we can take out a common factor of... Um, I'm putting out, sorry, I'm basically going to take out a common factor of x. Okay, so you left with 12x squared plus 11x minus 1. 12x squared plus 11x minus 1. So now what we can do is we can factorize it. Okay, so let's do that. So we know that this minus tells us that we've got opposite signs. Okay, but this one tells us that both numbers here are going to be one because one times one is one. So now we need to look for our factors of 12. So we've got 12 and one. We have got six and two and four and three. And this is one and one. And one of these has to be positive and the other one has to be negative, but we have to end up with plus 11x. So plus 12 times plus one gives me plus and one times minus one gives me minus. So then I'd have, the times I cross, 12 times one would be 12, plus one times minus one is minus one, which is 11, 11. So therefore that is my middle term here, okay? So that works. So then remember, how do you do this? You write this across like this, and we don't need these numbers. So it becomes 12x minus one x plus one, okay? Therefore, and that's it, sorry, then I'm done. So therefore my my, my, my terms are, or I factorize this, so it becomes x, 12x minus one, x plus one. Ta-da, okay. Right, now let's look at this one. Let's look at this one. Okay, so this is a bit interesting because we've got an a squared, an m squared, a b squared, and we've got 12mb. Okay, so the first thing again we look for are common factors, okay? And are there any common factors? Well, three goes into both 12 and nine and nine, but not into four. Four goes into 12 and four, but nothing else. And nine goes into these two, but nothing else. Hmm, okay, so that doesn't help us. So it's not common factors. It's not the difference of two squares. It's not a trinomial, so possibly grouping. Well, it has to be grouping. So now, let's see if we can work out how to group this. And there are different ways that we can group it. So why don't we try... I'm just having a look at it. Okay, let's just try... If I take this out, I'm left with a B and an M, but that doesn't help, does it? Okay, let's just try the first two and the last two and see what happens. What's the, what's the harm? We can always change, do it again if it doesn't work, okay? So if I do that, I've got 12MB plus 9A squared. That's really not going to work, is it? Because that's going to leave me with an M, a B, and an A squared. There's nothing there that's going to factorize. Whereas this is MB squared. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Ooh, but hang on. I just realized something. I've just realized that this is actually quite a tricky, sneaky one because it is a trinomial and a difference of two squares all in one. Do you agree that 4m squared plus 12mb and 9b squared, these three, can be part of a trinomial? Let me rewrite it so it goes 4 minus 4m squared plus 12mb minus 9b squared plus 9 a squared. Do you see that that looks like a trinomial? Um, let me, does that not look like a trinomial? It does look like a trinomial. Okay, there's an m squared, there's mb, and that's b squared, and then there's this a squared over here, which we'll worry about now now. So that is definitely a trinomial, but I don't like the minus in front of it. So I'm going to take a minus out. So I'm going to go minus. And then I've got 4m squared, Okay, minus 12mb, okay, plus 9b squared, okay, 
plus 9a squared. See that? That's quite sneaky, hey? Then let's see if we can factorize this. Well, the factors of 4 are 4 and 1 and 2 and 2, and the factors of 9 are 9 and 1 and 3 and 3 and 1 and 9. Okay, we need the factors to add up to negative 12. Both the signs have to be the same and they both have to be minus. Okay, both the signs have to be the same because of the plus here and both of them have to be minus. So it's minus and minus. Okay, and then we've got plus 9a squared. Awesome. So now, Let's see, 4 times 1 is 4, and 1 times 9 is 9, which makes 13, so that's not going to work. 4 times 3 is 12 already, so that's not going to work. 4 times 9 is 36, so that's not going to work. 4 does not work, okay. 2 times 1 is 2, and 9 times 2 is 18, so 18 plus 2 is not going to work, and 18 minus 2 is not going to work. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 3 is 6, and if we put minus and minus, we get minus 12. Yay, that works. So we're going to be writing it like that. So this becomes 2m minus 3b, and this becomes 2m minus 3b. Okay, so do you agree that that bracket is then m multiplied by itself? So it's effectively, this whole bracket is squared. So it becomes, I should have put e people signs here, sorry minus bracket 2m minus 3b all squared, okay, plus 9a squared. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to make space so that I can carry on because I haven't finished with this question at all. So I'm going to erase this and I'm sorry, but it's the only eraser this PowerPoint program has. So just hang in there. I don't want to erase all of it because it's nice to see what we've been doing along as we're doing the sum. Okay, so let's do that. Right, so now let's carry on. So I can rewrite this as 9a squared minus 2m minus 3b all squared. And do you see that that means now that we have the difference of two squares? This is a perfect square, that's a perfect square, and there's a minus. So that gets written as 3a, the square root of this is 3a, minus bracket 2m minus 3b. And then it becomes 3a plus 2m minus 3b. And then all we do is get rid of the brackets. So it becomes 3a minus some of the plus is a minus 2m minus some of the minus is a plus 3b. And then finally 3a plus 2m minus 3b. Ta-da! That was a nasty question, but actually very cool as well. But that's a level four question. You can expect at least one nasty level four question um, in your tests and exams. So please be aware that you can get something like this where they can combine trinomials and the difference of two squares and practice, okay? And like I've said before, the only way you're gonna get really good at factorizing is practice, practice, practice. Right, here we go. So we've got another example here. We've got x squared minus 25xy plus 144y squared. Okay, so after this last example, this actually looks like a really easy example because it's obviously a trinomial. Yeah, it's a squared, yeah, it is an xy, and there's a y squared. So obviously this is a trinomial, which is quite nice. Both the signs are the same, and they both are minus. The coefficient of x squared is 1, so that's x and x. So now all we have to do is find multiples of 144 that add up to 25. Okay, so let's think about this as 144 and 1. If we divide this by 2, we get 72. If we divide it by 3, 3 goes into 14, 4 times remainder 2, 3 goes into 24, 8 times. If we divide it by 4, will that work? Yes, it will. If we divide it by 4, 4 goes into 14 3 times, remainder 2, 4 goes into 6, 36. Um, 5 is definitely going to work. 6, 6 goes into 14 twice, remainder, wow. 6 goes into 14 twice, remainder 2, and into 24 goes 4 times. Okay, we're doing well. 
Um, seven, no, eight. Eight goes into 14. Once remained a six, yeah. Eight, eight goes into 14. Once remained a six and into 64 it goes. So it's one and 16. Um, and then nine, nine goes into 14. Once remained, no, nine doesn't work, thank goodness. 10 obviously doesn't work, 11, 12, 12 and 12. Okay, I think we're safe to say that that's it. Right, so what we need is two factors that when added up together, give us our 25. Give us our 25. Let's see if we can get anything like that. It's obviously not 144 and one. It's obviously not 72 and two. Obviously not 48 and three, or that, or that. Okay, it must B, no, that can't be that. 16 and 8. This has no solution. There is no solution for this. Because 12 times 12 is 144, but 12 plus 12 is 24, not 25. So either there's a typo, and this should have been a 24, in which case it would have worked. If that was 24, then this would have been 12 y and this would have been 12 y and then you would have had x minus 12 y all squared is the answer but if this is 25 then it is no solution okay let's look at this we've got r plus 1 over r squared minus r minus 1 over r squared okay so no, remember grade 10 so what i said to you is that you need to think of everything within a bracket as a single number and this is a different bracket, so it's a different single number. So if you wanted to, if you if you found it easier to do this, you could say let A equal R plus one over R, and you can say let B equal R minus one over R. Okay, then do you agree this becomes A squared minus B squared? Which is actually really easy, right? Because then it becomes A plus B a minus b a plus b a minus b okay and then all you need to do is substitute back in so if we do that and i'm going to write it over here and remember guys just because i write it down and across here doesn't mean that you must do it i'm writing it across here because i don't have space you guys obviously need to write it one below the other and i'm actually going to change color and write it slightly higher so you can see what i'm doing so it becomes a is r plus one over r so it becomes r plus one over r okay plus b plus that's a plus plus r minus one over r okay and then this becomes a plus b again a minus b so it's r plus one over r minus r minus one over r okay now we just need to add things up and get rid of the brackets this becomes r plus one over r plus r minus one over r so those cancel so that's quite nice this becomes 2r this becomes r plus one over r minus r minus times the minus is a plus one over r those cancel and this becomes times by one over two r so it becomes times by one over two r because it's one r plus one r is a half r um, one over two r and then obviously this cancels that and that cancels that and the answer is one hmm that's quite nice eh that's actually very nice okay more examples okay 4b cubed minus 8b squared minus ab plus 2a okay so again the first thing you do is look for common factors and there aren't common factors because although this this and this are factorized but are divisible by two this is not okay then is it a trinomial no is it difference between two squares no so it might be grouping okay and because these two are the only two terms that have got A in it, I'm going to group these two together, which means that these two are left together. Okay, so let's do that. So this becomes 4B cubed minus 8B squared minus. Now, remember, if I take out the minus, what happens? I'm left with AB minus 2A. 
So if I take out a common factor here, I can take out the 4, but I can also take out the b squared. So it's 4b squared. And what are we left with? We're left with b minus 2 minus. What can I take out? I can take out a common factor of a. And what are we left with? We're left with b minus 2. Yay! So we have a common factor of b minus 2. So you're left with b minus 2. And what's left with from the first term is 4b squared minus a. Ta-da! Okay, not too bad. Now let's look at this horrible thing. Sure, it looks terrible. Okay, so let's just take it baby steps. We've got x cubed plus 4x squared y plus 3x y squared. And it looks scary because it's obviously not a normal trinomial because although it's got three terms, there's a cubed here. But do you see that there's a cube there, x squared, then an x there. So I could actually take out a common factor of x and then see what I've got. So let's do that. Take out a common factor of x and you're left with x squared plus 4xy plus 3y squared. Can, now you, can you see that that actually is a very nice trinomial? There's a squared term, another y squared term, and a middle term. So that there is a trinomial. How wonderful is that? So all we need to do now is factorize it. Okay. The coefficients of x squared are 1. So that's just going to be an x and an x. This sign here tells you, the second sign tells you that they both... The upper ends are positive of the same and they're both positive, so that's plus and plus. So all we need to do is find factors of three that add up to four. And that's really easy because the only factors you've got are three or three and one, and they do add up to four. Three plus one is four. So it becomes three y and three y. Whoop! Okay. Oh no, it doesn't. It becomes three y and y. Let me just erase that. That's horrible. And y. There you go. Isn't that pretty? I think so. Okay, so do you see that there's <laughs> Gary Player had a saying, I mean, I think you guys are all too young to know who Gary Player is, but Gary Player was or is a very famous um, South African golf player. And he had a famous saying that said, the more he practices, the luckier he gets. And it's kind of tongue in cheek because what he's really saying is that the only way you can get better is to practice. So that's exactly what we've been doing here. So what I'd really like to suggest you guys do is, as I've said before, is that every time you come across a whole bunch of new questions, wait, let me go back up. So it's the beginning of the screen. Um, when you're watching this video, pause the video at the beginning of the screen. Try the questions for yourself, okay? And then when, once you've done them, if you know how to do them, great, wonderful, and you watch the video and you're awesome, that's fantastic. And if you have no clue, then watch the video. But then what I would suggest you do is go and practice some more. There's loads of examples on the Turn Able system. There's worksheets, there's multiple choice questions, there's exam papers, there's everything. There's videos on how to do the stuff, everything. And then once you've gone through that, then maybe come back again and then watch the video and again pause it and then try it for yourself again and make sure you can do these, okay? Because these are all exam level. Right, now that we've been practicing that, what I want to do is I want to show you a new part of factorizing, which is the sum and difference of two cubes. Now, the sum and difference of two cubes is actually really easy because there's a rule, okay? And the rule is this. If you've got they, they're exactly the same, okay? You've got a cubed plus b cubed becomes, first bracket, a plus b. Then it becomes a squared, a, b, and b squared, okay? So they're exactly the same. It doesn't matter if there's a plus or a minus between the cubes. It becomes a, b, a squared, a, b, b squared. Okay, a, b, a squared, a, b, b squared, right? The difference comes in with the signs, okay? If this is a plus, then your first bracket is your plus, and your first sign is opposite to it, okay? If this is a minus, then the first bracket is a minus, and this is opposite to it, and that's it. That's the rule, okay? So let us now try a couple of these cubes and see if you can get it. So we've got x cubed plus 125. So you want the cube root of x cubed, which is x, you want the cube root of 125, which is what? Let's think about that. It's 5 times 5 equals 25, times by 5 equals 125. But if you don't know how to do that, let me just show you in your calculator. Wait. There you go. So let me show in the calculator. 
if you look over, hmm, I just want to see if I can find a better one. There it is. If you go shift button, that didn't work. Let me try again. I don't think the shift pressed. Shift, there you go. Shift button. You can see there's a cube root, and then you go cube root of 125 equals, and there's the answer five. Okay. So if you guys don't know the cube root of something, then just go look. Okay, on your calculator. Your calculator might have a different way to get to the cube root, but it's there. Trust me, it's there. Okay, so let's remember that it's the same sign, okay, and then opposite sign on the next week thing. So it becomes x plus five. Then we've got x squared. Okay, we have the two of them multiply together and you double them, I think. It's good. You double? No, you don't. It's not a normal trinomial. So it becomes 5x. And then you multiply these together. It becomes what? Watch what happens. You square them. So it becomes 25. This sign is always plus. This sign is always opposite of what that sign is. So it's a minus. There you go. Okay, that's how easy this is. And this is generally not factorizable, um, not not without getting suits. Um, if you think about it, the factors of 25 are 1 and 25 and 5 and 5. There's no way we're going to get that as a 5. Okay, let's try this one. So, square root of the first term is A. Cube root, sorry, cube root of the first term is A. Cube root of 64, let's get out our calculator. Let's practice that. So, we're going to go clear. Then we're going to go shift cube root and we're going to go 64 4 equals and that's 4 so it becomes 4 and that's a plus then square of this term is a squared square of this term is 16 plus whatever the sign is you opposite it and then you multiply these two together and it becomes 4 a there you go Again, this is a lot of this is just practice, practice, practice. So you just need to make sure you understand how to do it. Okay, let's try this one. X cubed plus 27. Okay, cube root of X cubed is X. Cube root of 27 is 3. Think about it. 3 times 3 is 9. Times by 3 is 27. So it's X plus 3. Then what do we do? We square the first term x squared. We square the last term, 9. Always has a plus. Whatever the sign is, it's the opposite one, so it's minus, and then you multiply these two together, it becomes 3x. There you go. Now this one is minus 27u cubed plus 125, which looks quite scary to do, but we can do is we can rearrange it. We can say, well, that can be rewritten as 125 minus 27u cubed. And then it's very easy to do because we know the rule for that. That becomes cube root of 125, which we've already worked out is 5, minus the cube root of 27 is 3, and then it's u. Then square the first term, 25. Square the last term is 9u squared, always with a plus. Whatever the sign is, it's the opposite, so that becomes a plus, and you multiply this. 5 times 3 is? 15 u there you go and if you're not sure if you don't believe me we can multiply it out to prove it that it's true so let's just do that to make sure so first times the first is going to be equal to 125 first times this is 5 times 15 is 75 u and then 5 times 9 is 45 u squared this times this is minus 75u. That times that becomes minus 45u squared. And that times that becomes minus 27u cubed. That cancels with this. This cancels with that. And you're left with exactly what we started with, 125 minus 27u cubed. How beautiful is that? Okay, so we know it works. Now I've proved it to you. Now we get this horrible thing. Okay, now remember what did I say to you? I said to you, the first thing you always look for when you're factorizing is common factors. And you see that this is x to the 4 and this is an x. But also, do you see that this here is a, an even number and so is this? So I'm going to take out 2x on both of these. I'm going to say, okay, I can take out a common factor of 2x. I don't know where it's going to lead. I'm just going to try that. So if I do that, that becomes 125 x cubed plus 
12 divided by 2 is 64. So now, sorry, that's 105x cubed plus 64, which is beautiful because that there are perfect cubes. That 125 is a perfect cube, x cubed is a perfect cube, and 64 is a perfect cube. So that becomes 2x. Cube root of 125 is 5x plus cube root of 64 is what? 4. We've done that already. Then what do we do? We square the first term, 25x squared, opposite sign, minus, multiply these two together, becomes 20x, same sign, and square it. Ta-da! Okay, now let's look at this one. We've got 27a cubed minus 64b cubed. Okay, there are no common factors, so that's fine. Do you agree we can find the cube root of 27 is 3? We can find the cube root of 64, that is 4. So we can do this, becomes 3a minus 4b. Okay, then what does it do? Square is the first term, which is 9a squared. Multiply these two together and you do the opposite sign. So it becomes plus 12ab. And then we square the last term becomes plus 16b squared. And that's it. Nothing else we can do there. Let me just check. We've got 3 and 3 and 4 and 4. No, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. So that is it. We can't do anything more there. Right, again, we've got 2x cubed plus 16y to the 9. And again, what do we need to do? We always need to check for a common factor. So if we take a 2, what are we left with? We're left with x cubed plus 8y to the 9. Now remember what happens when you divide or multiply by an exponent, what happens to these? We add them or subtract them, okay? So this becomes 2. We want the cube root of that is x plus the cube root of this is 2y to the what? To the 3. Right, because 3 plus 3 plus 3 gives us 9. And then we want to square the first term, so it becomes x squared. Opposite sign, multiply these two together, it becomes 2xy to the 3. And then we square the last term, it becomes plus 4y to the 6. Okay, not too bad, hey? Right, now we can look at simplification of fractions. I'm actually going to stop here because we are going to use everything that we've learned so far in our factorization in simplification of fractions. And it's the end of the lesson, it's the end of the time. So what I'm going to suggest we do is we start this tomorrow and I would really like to urge you to go and practice, practice, practice your factorization so that you can do the simplification of fractions more easily. Grade 10s, please, if you can, join our um, class because if you join our class then you can actually message me and you can tell me which sections you're struggling with and everything else and also give me examples of questions that, you're, that you don't understand, etc. Right, have a wonderful day. Cheers.